Did you know that the world's largest drone was used as battlefield intelligence? Or how about the fact that the US was the one behind this incredible construction? Would you be interested in learning more? We sure would. Today, we will talk about the world's largest military drone, the RQ-4B Global Hawk. Can it sneak into enemy formations without getting noticed like others? Looking at its size, I wouldn't say so. To sneak, they must be very small, while this drone flies double the height we fly in the common passenger aircraft. So it is the world's largest, which now makes sense. Can it fire? Can it carry missiles or bombs? If you are wondering what this largest drone is and what it can do, we've got you covered. Without any further ado, let's dive deep into this. To answer your questions real quick, this drone is all about intelligence. It is the battlefield intelligence drone that basically assists the combat force. Whether it's day or night, the drone provides global all-weather intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance. In short, ISR capability. It provides military field commanders with high-resolution, near-real-time imagery of large geographic areas. The program is funded by the Defense Airborne Reconnaissance Office and managed by the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency and the U.S. Air Force. Northrop Grumman Corporation, Ryan Aeronautical Center is the prime contractor, and the principal suppliers include sensors, turbofan engine, carbon fiber wing, and communication system. So with insane capabilities like these, any country will not waste a second before running a test on it. And so did the US. Here, take a look at this video. This is the first flight of Global Hawk Block 20 on March 1, 2007, from Palmdale to EAFB. As you can see, with all the systems set, this drone has roared to the skies and it didn't take minutes to amuse the crowd around it. It blew from Northrop Grumman Palmdale, California facility to the Bird Flight Test Center at Edwards Air Force Base, California. Its fuselage was redesigned and strengthened before this flight. A 130-foot wingspan soaring through the skies at a high altitude of 32,000 feet was a view to wish for. Not only that, it was airborne for more than 90 minutes. It has also got a 3,000-pound internal payload capacity. The Air Force officials and the Northrop Grumman employees were ecstatic upon its landing. So this next-generation Block 20 has provided enhanced intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance capabilities as it has promised. It can serve up to vast geographic regions with pinpoint accuracy. This has 95% mission effectiveness and has applauded 9,000 combat hours. Anthony Kaiser, Global Hawk Project Manager at the Air Force Flight Test Center has said, The Global Hawk represents a huge tool and it's our fleet to provide intelligence data to the people on the ground that the Air Force pilots who are doing bombing missions in the Kerr flight on terror in the world. Bill McCall, Global Hawk Program Director USAF, Northrop Grumman has also said, We have a FAAF 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So there are six Block 20 air vehicles down in Moss Point. We started to jig loading the Block 40 air vehicles so very significant time. After the final series of operational testing and evaluation, Block 20 was delivered to the Air Force's 9th Reconnaissance Wing at Bial Air Force Base. And take a look at this too. So if you observe, this is an unmanned aircraft and this is the first RQ-4 Global Hawk. This as you can see, after an 18-hour flight from the main operating base at Bial Air Force Base in California, has landed in Guam. It's no wonder these were already used in many military operations, and in one such Block 30 was said to be destroyed. We all know about the US-Iran tensions that keep getting worse by the day. The Air Force planned to retire the Block 30 variants of its RQ-4 Global Hawk aircraft, but the fate of the Global Hawk was already decided. Iran's Revolutionary Guard said they shut down a U.S. spy drone, the Global Hawk BAMSD surveillance drone in 2019 with the surface-to-air missiles, and we are yet to see the fate of the other blocks. Let's talk about its developments, communications, survivability, etc. Development Northrop Grumman developed the next-generation RQ-4B having a 50% payload increase and longer fuselage of 47.6 feet, and a new generator to provide 150% more electrical output. 
three RQ-4B air vehicles Block 20 were initially ordered, plus a further five ordered in November 2005. Block 20 aircraft also has an upgraded sensor suite. The first Block 20 Global Hawk completed a maiden flight in April 2007, and the first was delivered in June 2008. The Block 40 Global Hawk, with a multi-platform radar technology insertion program, was selected by NATO for the Alliance Ground Surveillance Program. The original proposal had manned and unmanned elements, but the Alliance decided to go ahead with a UAV-only program in September 2007. The production of the first NATO AGS Block 40 Global Hawk aircraft began in 2013, and the first of the five aircraft completed a successful flight in November 2019. Global Hawk's Record-Breaking Flights In April 2001, Global Hawk made aviation history when it completed the first non-stop flight across the Pacific Ocean by an unmanned powered aircraft, flying from Edwards AFB, California to the Royal Australian Air Force Base Edinburgh, South Australia. In August 2003, Global Hawk became the first UAV to receive authorization from the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration to fly in the national airspace. In November 2003, Global Hawk completed a series of flight tests in the USA and Germany carrying an EADS electronic intelligence payload. Northrop awarded a $104 million contract to Raytheon in 2016 for upgrading the ground controls of the USAF's Global Hawk UAS. Communications Global Hawk has wideband satellite data links and line of sight data links developed by L3 Communications. The bulge at the top front surface of the fuselage, which gives Global Hawk its distinctive appearance, houses the 48-in Kuban White Band Satellite Communications antenna. Data is transferred by Kuban Satellite Communications, X-band line of sight links, and both SATCOM and line of sight links at the UHF band. Survivability for increased survivability, the mission is planned for threat avoidance using available theater assets such as AWACS, Combat Air Patrol, and J-STARS. The aircraft flies high at a loiter altitude of 65,000 feet, which minimizes exposure to surface-to-air missiles. The aircraft's modular self-defense system includes an AN-ALR-89 radar warning receiver, an onboard jamming system, and an ALE-50 tow decoy system. Air Vehicle Construction The wings and tail of the aircraft are of graphite composite construction. The V configuration of the tail, built by Aurora Flight Sciences, provides a low radar and infrared signature. The wings, constructed by Vought Aircraft Industries, have a span of 116.2 feet, with hard points for external pods up to 1,000 pounds each. Vought and ATK are fabricating an enhanced wing one of several system improvements to enable Global Hawk to carry an increased payload. The aluminum fuselage contains a pressurized payload and avionics compartment. Honeywell Aerospace Torrance, California supply the environmental control systems. Mission Planning The Mission Control Center has data up and down links to the Global Hawk vehicle directly and via the KU satellite and the UHF satellite systems. Transportability the complete mission control element and the launch and recovery element are transportable in a single load on the C-5B transporter aircraft and in less than two loads in the C-17 transporter. This world's largest drone also made it to history by being the first pilotless aircraft to cross the Pacific Ocean. It flew non-stop from the Edwards AFB to RAAF Base Edinburgh in Australia. This was used by Japan, South Korea, NATO, and NASA. Looks like the world's largest drone has caught the eyes of some of the world's powerful countries, since countries like India, Australia, Canada, Spain, and New Zealand have expressed their interest and were considered potential buyer. Well, who wouldn't want to acquire such a drone with incredible capabilities that could disarm the enemies just with its intelligence? That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this video, consider leaving a like and subscribe for more updates.